Let's get to our big story now. It is political season, isn't it? We want to start things off with an email we got from earlier this week from Scott. He wrote, I enjoy watching the story and appreciate what you do with this format. That said, it is barely tolerable to watch when it's flooded with the same one sided political ads day after day. And Scott, I promise you, we hear you. TV ads for Washington's third congressional district race are running nonstop right now ahead of Tuesday's primary. We hear them on the radio and for many of us who live in southwest Washington, myself included, we also get a barrage of spam text messages. I swear I get them every day. The most frequent TV ads, though, seem to be for the incumbent Republican Jamie Herrera Butler or ads for both for and against one of her Republican challengers, and that is Joe Kent. And in case somehow you have missed all of these ads, here's a little taste. Joe Kent was a registered Portland Democrat who supports Bernie Sanders' socialist ideas. He admitted it. I've got a message for Joe Kent. Leave my social security alone. I'm honored to have President Trump's endorsement, and I'd be honored to have your vote. All right, so before we really dive into these ads, here's a little background on this race. Herrera Butler was first elected to Congress in 2010. She lives in Battleground. She voted to impeach President Trump in January of 2021 after the insurrection at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Trump vowed revenge on the 10 Republicans who voted to impeach him. He's also endorsed Joe Kent, who is running on a hardcore conservative platform. Kent grew up in Sweet Home, Oregon, and was a special forces soldier in the army. In 2019, his wife Shannon was killed while fighting ISIS in Syria. That brought Kent back to Portland, which he found was too far to the left, so he moved to Yakel, Washington. Kent says he is running against Herrera Butler because she betrayed the trust of voters in her district. Our Laurel Porter is talking with him about that this week on Straight Talk. So really, it was the aftermath of the 2020 election. I had major issues with the way the election was handled. I felt there was a good deal of evidence of fraud. So when Jamie Herrera Butler voted to certify the election of 2020, I had major reservations. And then when she uh, voted for the impeachment of President Trump after the riot on January 6th, I realized that she was not capable of defending our district and really our nation um, against the onslaught of what the, the radical left is doing to our country right now. And so I didn't see any other Republicans stepping forward to go and challenge her. I had never intended on uh, running for office before, but I fought for this country for 20 years, lost many friends, lost my late wife in this fight, worked heavily on the Trump 2020 campaign, so I believed in the America First agenda. And so I, I looked around and I said, well, if I don't go do this, then I feel like no one else will. Now, we also talked with Jamie Herrera Butler. She says she stands by her vote to impeach Donald Trump, but she wishes more of the public had been able to see what led to that vote. I didn't understand that people hadn't seen, um, you know, police officers being beaten with Blue Lives Matter flagpoles. I didn't know that people hadn't seen officers being drugged into a crowd and tased. I, I assumed that that was being seen all over. Um, but yeah, I did what I felt like I needed to do uh, per my oath of office. Um, it definitely, uh, as you noted, has caused me to get some primary challengers. But I also feel like um, this is exactly what someone I, as, as a conservative who grew up in this district, would expect from someone in, it, who, who is my elected official. OK, a third Republican running in the same race is Heidi St. John, a homeschool advocate and Christian author. She has raised less money than the other two challengers, which is why you're seeing more of their TV ads than hers. But she claims that she is the only true conservative in the race. Well, I think if people are looking for a true conservative voice in Congress, I am that voice. I'm the only true conservative. I'm running against a, a Democrat who has communist viewpoints. I'm running against another uh, person who claims to be a Republican but has absolutely no record of voting for conservative values at all and, in fact, leans towards socialism. And I'm running against Jamie Herrera Butler, who votes more often with the Democrats than almost any other Republican in Congress. And so I'm running to be a true conservative voice for Southwest Washington. Now, there is a fourth candidate who's a contender in this race. Marie Glusenkamp Perez is a small business owner running as a Democrat. She says she's got a good chance of winning the primary because of the voter makeup in South, Southwest Washington. Listen, this district is 43 percent Democrats, so Jamie is relying on Democrats to vote for her. That is a very risky bet on her part. Um, so I, I you know, we've got to work hard. We can't take anything for granted and we're, we are working hard, um, but we 
believe we can make it through. So those are the main players that we are focusing on, and we wanted to get some insight into how the race is going so far. We turn to Portland based Republican strategist Rebecca Tweed. Her Congresswoman Herrera Butler has faced challenges before, but this is a pretty significant. It's a pretty significant one. Our opponents have raised some money. Uh, you know, when you start seeing campaigns go negative, whether it's in advertising, you know, on TV or social media, or even letters to the editor that pop up in my newsfeed for that race, it's typically indicative that, you know, the incumbent feels that they're vulnerable somewhere, right? They've done some polling and they've seen a certain section of voters that seem to be leaning towards an opponent. And in these last, you know, few days before uh, the primary comes out, that's when you're going to see this kind of activity if, if you think you're, you know, if you're worried about something. Now, one organization is dumping truckloads of money into this congressional race. It's a group called Winning for Women, and it has spent $741,000 against Joe Kent. The group is a political action committee or a PAC. It's focused on getting Republican women in Congress. They've also spent $230,000 on campaign mailers supporting Herrera Butler. Tweed, our expert, says the incumbent is worried. Well, look, Joe Kent has an amazing story, amazing history of serving the country, and it's no surprise that he has kind of carried the banner for the very far right, uh, pretty, pretty aggressive flag that people are waving right now that we're seeing across the country uh, in some of these big seats. And I think that, uh, you know, women voters and younger voters are worried about what that kind of impact would have if he's elected on some of the policies that he's looking to put forward, you have some really strong women candidates, including the incumbent, of course, uh, that, that I would say have a more reasonable approach to some policy making. Uh, and Joe Kent has made quite a name for himself. He's raised a lot of money. These outside organizations are always going to come in, um, you know, at the last minute or, you know, when votes really start to matter to try to push those voters their direction. So this is all why you are seeing so many ads, not only from Joe Kent's campaign talking about how great he is, but also the other ads saying he is not a true Republican. And there's that one that kind of shows him with long hair and living in Portland and registered as a Democrat. Do you think, does that penetrate to voters? I think it does. And, and as an, you know, as I'm observing the race, I think the Congresswoman is probably seen in her polling and research that she's doing that some of the older voters, which tend to be the most partisan, tend to be the most, you know, if they voted Republican their whole life, they're going to stay there. Uh, and that's really where, you know, Joe is probably appealing uh, to some of the voters that just want to say we're Republicans, we want Republican policies. And so trying to attack him on some of the social security statements he's made that, you know, he has responded to by changing his message. And then trying to put, you know, picture him as a little bit more Portland, a little bit more progressive than he looks. That's really going to have an edge with some of those voters that say, hey, we thought this guy was as Republican as they get and conservative as they get. Maybe we need to just trust the incumbent. And while Heidi St. John does not have quite as high a profile as Kent, our expert says the real race here is for second place. And that is because in Washington, the top two vote getters move on to the general election and then anything can happen. If you come in second, I mean, you are now part of the full campaign for the general election. And often that's when we'll see a lot of national resources come in, a lot of national organizations Will kind of hold back in, in this position. I mean, we've seen some money come in, but, you know, congressional committees and such, uh, when they really feel like, okay, now we have our two, where's our chance? Who do we need to protect and who's most vulnerable and who has the best option to take somebody out? Uh, and Washington has different campaign finance laws. So a lot of that uh, money is available from third parties and super PACs that you don't see in other states. Um, but yeah, I mean, and it's a race to the finish. Oh, so much drama here. We are definitely keeping an eye on that race. The primary, by the way, is August 2nd. That's less than a week away. You can watch the full interviews with those top four candidates tomorrow night on a special hour-long edition of Straight Talk.